हेलो फ्रेंड्स हाउ आर यू ऑल लेट अस कंटिन्यू मेजरिंग द इकोनॉमी टॉपिक टिल द प्रीवियस वीडियो वी हैव स्टडीड वॉट एवर वॉज मैंशन इन द एन सी आर टी टेक्सट बुक ओके द वेरी थियरेटिकल थिंग्स लाइक वॉट इज जी डी पी हाउ इट इज एस्टिमेटेड बाई थ्री डिफरेंट मैथड्स वॉट इज जी एन पी वॉट इज नेशनल इनकम राइट सो दिस थिंग्स वेर ऑल थियरेटिकल एंड दिस थियरेटिकल नॉलेज इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू अंडरस्टैंड द बेसिक कॉन्सेप्ट्स Uh, about estimating GDP, but uh, in this video today we will study how GDP is calculated in real life, right? So we see in the newspapers, in the headlines that India's GDP is going to become, uh, say, three trillion dollars by twenty twenty four, or this kind of uh, you know news we always see the GDP is going to grow at eight percent, nine percent. so how do we actually reach at these numbers right so there must be some calculations that is going on uh, in every country and in india also it happens so we will in this video we will see how uh, this takes place so first of all the very basic things that we should understand is that the gdp is calculated for three sectors so basically any economy is divided into three sectors the primary sector the secondary se- sector and the tertiary sector primary sector consists of agriculture forestry fishing mining all these activities okay these are all primary sector then secondary sector consists of manufacturing basically you know factories industries power okay power meaning electricity generation of power distribution of power and gas and water so uh, these are considered to be the secondary uh, sector also construction is considered here okay construction in, uh, you know real estate construction and all that is also considered in secondary sector in tertiary sector we see all different kinds of services like transportation communication banking insurance defense public administration etc so these are the three different sectors and we have to look at these three sectors in order to estimate the total gdp of the economy because our economy consists of these three sectors now where do we get the data from for goods okay so for goods basically we'll get the data from asi asi is annual survey of in, uh, industries then index of industrial uh, production economic census okay and nsso surveys nsso surveys is basically national sample survey organization surveys they do surveys uh, for usually for informal economies like uh, you know household surveys and they will try to estimate how much uh, economy is growing or how it is doing in the informal sector different kind of surveys are happening so there are different rounds of surveys and that is known as nsso survey for services we look at the cbdt central board of direct taxes right we look all we also look at data from cbec central board of excise and customs so uh, you know these are all uh, you know the variables which give us an idea of how much is uh how much trade or how much transactions are going on in services because the more the service tax uh you know the more will be service transactions so that is how we estimate the gdp so it is always an estimation it is never an accurate measurement it is always an estimation okay so estimation is based on some data and we try to approximately uh, you know know what is the value of our gdp so it is always an estimation so central board of excise and custom will give you the service tax then there are different indexes such as cpi okay consumer price index uh, to measure inflation in services so from the uh, service inflation also we get to know how much you know uh, has the service gdp has increased in our country up to 2015 in our country the cso which is the central statistics office calculated the gdp at factor cost okay fact i have already explained to you the meaning of factor cost so factor cost basically we get it from the income or value added method income method meaning whatever the wages rent profit and interest earned by the factors of production so we will just sum them all and we will get the total value added okay we will get the total income earned by the different factors of production in the economy so whatever we get out of this it is at the factor cost okay it is not at the market price so up to 2015 we used to look at our gdp at factor cost this used to be our benchmark uh but after 2015 there were cso reforms some reforms happened okay the government made some reforms and in calculation of gdp how gdp should be calculated and ever since we are looking at gdp at market prices okay gdp at market prices uh, that to also constant prices you know at at a base year okay base year 
constant meaning base year prices we'll explain i i'll explain to you what does this mean but for the moment uh, you know just understand that this is the change that has happened that now uh, official gdp is gdp at market prices and market prices are the constant prices of base year okay uh, in order to arrive at the uh, real gdp of our country one more thing i would like to tell you that this central statistics office is a part of mospi which is ministry of statistics and program implementation and nsso which i have explained to you before uh, is also a part of mospi okay national sample survey organization office national sample survey office and central statistics office in i think in 2018 you check the exact date but this cso and nsso were combined okay and one organization called as nso national statistics office national statistics office was formed okay so now these two are combined cso and nsso and there is just one organization nso uh so that was uh, some information i wanted to give you now let us look at what were these reforms uh, 2015 reforms so before 2015 reforms as we have seen that we used to calculate gdp at factor cost so you know at factor cost we used to look at the wages profits rent and interest these were the basic and uh, you know very rudimentary kind of estimation uh, of gdp but after that we saw that uh, you know we we changed this so wages were changed to compensation okay then uh, profits were changed to mixed income or operating surplus and rent and interest were changed to the consumption of fixed capital so these were the changes i will explain to you the difference between this so see before there was wages so wages included only salary okay whatever the salary monthly salary annual salary the company used to pay its worker and this is also again for the formal sector okay for the formal sector where all the accounts are mentioned you know the companies are registered with uh, with the government under the, under the companies act they are paying their uh, employees a formal salary right uh, so initially wages used to consider only the salary part but apart from salary you know the company also pays a lot of social security compensation like right uh, medical insurance health insurance okay etc so lot of social security compensation is also made like for example uh, contribution to the nps national pension scheme so those things are also mentioned so we now look at the total compensation so compensation will include salary no doubt but it will also include the social security compensation so now we have expanded the uh, you know horizon so initially we used to only look at the wages now in the wages we have added other compensation other social security also and now we look at a broader concept called as compensation total compensation now this was for the formal sector now what about the informal sector okay uh, in formal sector we know that the workers used to get wages okay we could look at their salaries entrepreneurs used to get at profit we we can look at their operating surplus which is the profit of operating surplus is nothing but the profit okay when we study the corporate finance i will uh, also make a video on corporate finance okay uh, in which i will explain to you about the company's balance sheet and how uh, you know company different kind of expenditure is made and how uh, formal balance sheet looks like so in that you will understand what is the meaning of our operating surplus but for the moment just understand that operating surplus is nothing but the profits declared by the companies so these are all for formal sectors but what about the informal sector household ent enterprises okay like there are women who are making papad they are doing papad business or maybe you know msmes in informal sector some small small shopkeepers chai walas okay dukan wala so there are so many different people who are informal sector and we can't separate wages from profit so for example if there is a shop and a husband and a wife okay husband and wife are running that that shop and also they have one son so all three of them are running this shop now uh, for example if their total revenue for example the revenue meaning the whatever the sell proceeds is say for example annually they are getting 10 lakh and out of the 10 lakh their cost was say uh, 5 lakh so this 5 lakh is their profit but now whether this 5 lakh is only the profit or also they are because they are also working there right they are also acting as laborers there they are uh, they are doing hard work okay uh, so they are, they are putting some hard work there they, are, they so they should be given some salary also but in informal sector nobody pays salary to themselves husband will not pay salary to wife or son or vice versa so we can't separate you know the component of profit from the component of wages etc salary just like we can do in the formal sector so such a income is known as mixed income okay such a income this 5 lakh is the mixed income so it consists of both profit of the firm as well as the wages and salary of the people working there 
okay so profits is for the registered companies which is operating surplus and mixed income is for the informal sector or unorganized sector and this mixed income is obtained by doing the surveys nsso surveys can get this information now the next uh, concept was consumption of fixed capital right so we had seen that in the previous there was rent and uh, interest payments okay but we have to also look at the consumption of fixed capital now this fixed capital concept was introduced through the sna 2008 sna 2008 is system of national account system of national accounts okay and this system was developed by united nation world bank imf okay oecd european commission oecd uh, and european commission these are the five uh, international bodies and uh, uh, you know uh, bas basically this system was developed so as to have a common platform so that we can compare the gdp of different countries so you know if we have the same system we can compare gdp of us with china with india okay like that so this system was adopted in india also and the basic logic in this system the basic difference uh, was that uh, about the fixed capital so basically see if there is a fixed capital fixed capital meaning the capital which cannot be moved for example machinery heavy machineries okay machineries land etc these are all the fixed capital so unless and until you are not using this fixed capital it will be counted as intermediate goods in the economy because it is not being used for any productive purpose so even if a company is buying machineries if it is buying some land or any other capital good it will be counted as intermediate good and it will not be considered in the calculation of gdp because you are not using it for production but when the production begins the moment the production begins the value of capital starts falling and you are in a way consuming the fixed capital okay you are consuming it there is a wear and tear there is a depreciation happening so uh, this is the logic behind it that they are using so uh, we have to look at where the production is happening and when the production is happening the value of capital is falling and uh, you know there are different estimates how to do this so how much is the consumption of fixed capital we get it from there Uh, now basically we have understood what is the compensation what is the consumption of fixed capital what is mixed income operating surplus so when we add all these components for a given firm we get gross value added at factor cost for one firm again these are at factor cost right these are at factor cost because we are looking the compensation and uh, you know payments given to the factors of production different factors of production so this is nothing but the gross value added at factor cost for one firm this we are looking firm wise okay now gross value added for one firm which is i the ith firm at factor cost plus production taxes minus production subsidies will give us the gross value added at basic prices okay we had seen in the previous uh, video also that when we add some indirect taxes uh, and uh, when we sub uh, subtract the indirect subsidies uh, from the gdp at factor cost we get the uh, gdp at uh, you know market prices basically now because we are looking at the real life okay we are looking in the real world so we have to also separate the factor cost from market from market price and from basic price okay these are the three concepts we need to understand basic price market price and factor cost till now we have only studied factor cost and market price but now i am also in going to introduce the concept of basic price so see shun production and production subsidies and production taxes this is important i am not talking about product taxes production taxes and production subsidies what are these see production tax is independent of the production volume so it does not depend on the what is the volume of production so it is not per unit production it is not per unit production just like excise duties right excise duties are per unit of production so at the more the production the more the excise duties so those are different kind of taxes these are independent of production volume it does not depend whether a factory produces 1000 cars or it produces 10000 cars it has to pay the same production tax what is the meaning it is a stamp duty land revenue professional tax right so if a company is having say 5 acres of land it has to pay the same land revenue regardless of whether uh, you know it is manufacturing 1000 cars or 10000 cars similarly production subsidies are also independent of the production volume for example railway subsidies input subsidies to farmers okay administrative subsidies to corporates etc so these are not dependent on the uh, volume of production that they are doing so when we add such production taxes and subtract the production subsidies from the factor cost we get the gva at basic prices this is for one firm okay we have to look at firm wise 
now when we sum all such gross value added at basic prices we get the total gross value added for the economy and basic price okay this is just the summation we are just adding up so for example if there are n from gva1 plus gva2 plus up to gva n okay these are the total firm we are adding all the gross value added and we are getting the total gva for the economy at basic prices now let us come here now when we get the gva at basic prices uh, you know already production tax and production subsidies are included in this now we add the product tax and product subsidies so here see it is product tax and product subsidies then we get the gdp at market price so in the, finally when the total gv of the economy at basic price when we add the product tax uh, and uh, subtract the production subsidy here it should be subtraction so and, and we subtract the production subsidies we get the gdp at market price okay this is how this is uh, the formula is just like here so now what is meaning by product tax product tax is per unit of production product subsidy is also per unit of production example vat gst excise etc and uh, example of product subsidies is food petroleum subsidies fertilizer subsidies interest subvention to farmers it depends on you know how much production is happening per unit of production so this is how we get the gdp at market prices this is the gdp that we want to arrive at now one more thing this gdp at market prices this is the price of the current year okay price of the current year meaning in the year in which we are looking at the gdp for example if we are calculating gdp for 2021 so these are the prevailing market prices of 2021 and there must be some inflation also so when we adjust for inflation we get the gdp at constant market prices and this constant market prices is the prices of the base year okay prices of base year now why do we look at this because we want to look at the actual increase in volume of gdp volume of gdp and not just the increase in prices because gdp can increase either because of increase in volume of production or increase in prices uh, in the economy so we want to only look at what is the actual real increase in gdp so this is known as real gdp okay at constant prices and this is our official gdp of india now i will explain to you why why do we look at the real gdp okay real gdp is basically the gdp at the constant prices and it looks at actually the increase in volume volume of production in the economy actual real increase in volume okay so we'll look at that base year in india is 2011 so we uh, uh, look at the prices of 2011 for computing the real gdp now gdp at market prices of the current year for example 2021 is known as the nominal gdp for 2021 okay and gdp at market prices for base year is known as the real gdp so we have to look at uh, the real gdp nominal gdp when you divide by a real gdp you you get a gdp deflator and it is a measure of change in prices right because uh, you know nominal gdp it may have increased because of increase in prices or increase in production volume of production but real gdp is only because of increase in production because the prices we are keeping constant we are looking at the same price level so when we divide this we get the gdp deflator and it is an indication of change in prices how much prices have changed now i will explain to you with an example don't worry uh this may sound a little bit uh, you know uh, difficult or confusing to you but don't worry with this example i will explain to you so the base year is 2011 right so uh, let us look at the four years of gdp okay so 2011 12 13 and 14 we are looking at this assume that uh, you know in the economy uh, there is just one commodity which is getting produced and that is our uh, that, that that is all the production that we are doing in the economy so for example of that one commodity the quantity produced in 2011 is 100 okay price in that year of that commodity the market price of that year was 100 so the value of production will be quantity multiplied by price right we are producing 100 quantities and it is selling at 100 price so 100 multiplied by 100 gives you 10,000 so this is the 10,000 uh, is the total value of GDP at market price okay at market price of that current year now let us come to 2012 in 2012 the quantity produced remains the same okay there is no increase in the quantity so if 100 cars were getting produced in 2012 also there is an increase there, there is no increase in cars produced only 100 but the prices have increased to 110 so when we multiply this 100 multiplied by 110 we get the 11,000 okay so 
जी डी पी एट मार्केट प्राइसेज हैज़ इंक्रीज फ्रॉम टेन थाउजेंड टू इलेवन थाउजेंड सो वी कैन से दैट अवर अवर जी डी पी हैज़ ग्रोन अवर जी डी पी हैज़ ग्रोन बाई टेन परसेंट इट इज़ अ टेन परसेंट ग्रोथ बट इज इट अ रियल जी डी पी ग्रोथ कैन कैन यू से दैट द एक्चुअल वेलफेयर इन द इकोनॉमी हैज़ इंक्रीज बिकॉज सी इनिशियली वी आर हैविंग ओनली हंड्रेड कार्स नाउ ऑल्सो वी आर हैविंग ओनली हंड्रेड कार्स दिस इंक्रीज इज ओनली बिकॉज ऑफ दिस इंक्रीज इन प्राइजेज फ्रॉम हंड्रेड टू हंड्रेड एंड टेन सो इन ऑर्डर टू अकाउंट फॉर सच यू नो मिस्टेक्स यू नो इन ऑर्डर टू अकाउंट फॉर सच यू नो इन्फ्लेशन वी वी हैव टू लुक एट द जी डी पी एट द कॉन्स्टेंट प्राइसेज सो वॉट वी डू इज वी डिसाइड अ बेस ईयर सो वी हैव डिसाइडेड दैट अवर बेस ईयर विल भी टू थाउजेंड इलेवन एंड वी विल ऑलवेज भी लुकिंग एट द प्राइस ऑफ द टू थाउजेंड इलेवन ओनली फॉर मल्टीप्लाइंग सो नाउ इन ऑर्डर टू अराइव एट द वैल्यू ऑफ बेस ईयर प्राइसेज जी डी पी एट बेस ईयर प्राइसेज वी विल मल्टीप्लाई दिस क्वान्टिटी विद दिस प्राइस विथ हंड्रेड एंड देन वी विल ऑप्टेन दिस टेन थाउजेंड सो नाउ यू सी देर इज नो एक्चुअल इंक्रीज इन जी डी पी इट इज टेन थाउजेंड इट इज टेन थाउजेंड हियर Similarly, now let us come to um, uh, you know 2013 year. In 2013, say the volume of production increased from 100 to 120. Now suddenly the volume of production increased by 20 percent. Okay, so the number of cars increased by 20, but the prices fell. Okay, because of some reason the prices fell and the prices now become 90 from 110 to 90. So the GDP now is 10,800. Now you look at this. If from 2012 to 2013, you will feel that the GDP has fallen. Okay, if you look at this number, you will say that in 2012 our GDP was 11,000. Now in 2013 our GDP is only 10,800. But in reality, the production has increased. Actual welfare has increased. The actual production of cars has increased in the economy. Again, we will compare with the same base. So we have to multiply it with the base year price. 120 multiplied by 100. Uh, 100 Uh, we will get the twelve thousand. So you see, there is a jump in GDP here in the real GDP. So this is the actual measure of real welfare of real increase in GDP, real growth. This gives you the real growth. Similarly, come to two thousand fourteen. Now say the production has fall. There is some kind of recession. So from one twenty only eighty cars are getting produced, but the prices have also jumped. Prices have jumped directly from ninety to one fifty. Say. Okay, ninety to one fifty, the prices have jumped. Now, the if you multiply eighty by one fifty, you will get twelve thousand. So now again, you will feel oh, see, uh, previous year two thousand thirteen, the GDP was ten thousand eight hundred. Now it has increased to twelve thousand. But is it a real increase in GDP? No, it is not a real because in reality, the volume of production has fallen. Our welfare has actually decreased. Now, in order to look at the real GDP, we will multiply this number, the volume by the same base year price, and then we will get this number eight thousand. so here you see you will see that there is actually a fall in real gdp so this uh, you know kind of uh, gdp at market prices is known as nominal gdp and real gdp is the gdp at the constant prices and real gdp gives you the actual real uh, real face of the economy okay real face of the economy how it is doing whether the increase in numbers of gdp is only because of increase in price or whether it is because of actual increase in production so this is how uh, you know i have tried to explain to you uh, you know the difference between nominal and real gdp i hope you have understood this now as i was telling in the uh, you know that gdp is same as welfare gdp is same as welfare but actually is gdp same as welfare so if the country's gdp is more if the country's gdp is more does it mean that it is more happy does it mean that you know the welfare of people has increased or more the gdp more is the welfare uh, actually no okay so it is uh, uh, strictly speaking it is not so okay strict strictly speaking no so why because we have to also look at the distribution of gdp okay is it only because of like you know a few businessmen few industrialists that the gdp is increasing it may happen that there are just you know 10 people in the entire country who are earning a lot of money and you know other poor people they are not actually seeing an increase in their incomes and we will see that overall in the country the gdp is rising but we have to look at the distribution of gdp also whether that development is in inclusive or not whether that growth is inclusive or not whether the poor people are also experiencing an increase in income or not then second thing is there are lot of non monetary exchanges right non monetary exchanges meaning you know a uh, best example is that you know whatever uh, the work the women do the housewives do at home so uh, they don't get paid for it but it also has an economic value right for example your mother is cooking food for you 
and we are not paying her anything now if you hire uh, you know another lady to cook you have to pay her something so equivalently you know the value of work that your mother is doing it has some economic value because otherwise if your mother was not there you had to pay some money so there are some more non monetary exchanges also barter exchanges also happening in the economy still now at some places so all those things are not included in the gdp numbers right because we don't have data for them we don't know anything about them so it is not the actual sign of welfare then externalities externalities is basically uh, you know the effect of any action in gdp it may be a good effect or bad effect on the other people you know uh, the effect which were not intended for example uh, uh, you know education so for example if one person is getting educated then other four people around him will also benefit out of it because you know he will spread education you know he will talk good things like that so you know there may be some good externalities positive externalities also and when there are positive externalities of any production of any action in the economy then we actually underestimate the welfare so we will look at you know the gdp has not increased so much but actually the welfare has increased more because other people have also benefited from some activity then there are some kind of bad externalities negative externality also for example pollution so say for example there is an industry which is producing chemicals it is producing chemicals so it is leading to an increase in gdp in the economy because it is selling chemicals it is doing business but at the same time it is also polluting a lot of air and river okay river water pollution is happening air pollution is happening so now who will pay the price for this poor people are suffering other people are suffering because of this so in that case all we look at the gdp we will see that oh the gdp is increasing so but you know actually there are other bad effects also which we are not counting so in that case we overestimate the welfare by looking at gdp so these are some of the example and lastly money is not everything okay money is not everything Uh, USA is one of the wealthiest country in the world but it ranks 19th in the happiness okay so there may be a country which may be the poorest which does not have a lot of resources but it may be the happiness uh, it it may be the happiest so happiness does not really depend on how much you are earning how much is your income how much money you have how much endowments you have so basically these are some of the four uh, uh, you know things that i wanted to discuss with you gdp is definitely not same as welfare because of these reasons uh here we have also studied how in real life the gdp is calculated okay uh, uh now in the next uh, video we will we'll learn some other aspects of economy which are measured okay which are which are measured in the economy and that will be covered as part of this lesson series thank you